I'm Jake with Senkut Sen. Welcome back to our series on the technical side of bending. Every day, Senkut Sen bends tens of thousands of parts, so we know a thing or two about bending. So let's get into it. Check it out. Welcome to lesson four, where we're gonna be going over deformation and die lines. If you haven't seen lessons one through three yet, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but go back, pause it right now, check those out. So let's get into this one right here. So the first thing that we wanna talk about is kind of going to the board here, is that we have our part, you know, and it's bent orientation, and we have two main components that we're gonna be adding to this conversation. Up until this point, we've talked about terms and what's happening in this bend area, but why is it happening to that part? We have a punch right here, so we can go ahead and label that right here. And this is our punch. This is what's gonna be making contact with the part and moving. So this is having force that's coming down through this. So we have punch. And then down here, we have our die. So we'll label this die. And the die is actually a solid mounted piece of material that's in the machine. And we have the two right here. And so with these two, this punch is coming down and the material lays flat across our die. And as it comes down, it presses it through that V and that's what creates that bend that we're kind of seeing in this diagram right here. And so the first thing that I wanna talk about is, is a new key term, which is flange length. And this one I'm actually labeling short flange length. So I'm gonna be a little bit more specific. And with short flange length is, is I'm bringing up the concept that we have three key points of contact that have to occur in order for this bend to successfully happen. We have the contact of the punch coming down in the center of our bend, so this will be always the center of our bend. And then we have two points of contact on each side of our die spanning across it. If this flange does not make contact with the third point, this flange will fold into the V and we don't get a bend. And I think we can probably have a little B-roll with that a little bit there. And so those three points of contact are critical in order to have that bend. The next thing is, is that these two points of contact out here result in something that we call a die line or a, like a little contact point that's on our part. So let's go ahead and look at these parts right here. What ends up happening is you see a little witness mark that shows up on each side of the bend and that's coming from the contact point on each side of the die. And with that, as we pop back here, that shows us that that die width is going to determine where those contact points are. And so if you go to the material guidelines, and we're gonna get a little send cut send specific right now, the material guidelines on our website for each material has those specific dies that we're gonna be using on that material. And here, in order for us to get your parts out as fast as possible and as consistent as possible, we use very specific dies and punches for each material, and those don't change. And so when you're designing your parts, know that you're gonna end up getting a witness mark in those two locations. It is important to know that if you powder coat or even anodize spray can or whatever you're gonna do on your parts, it does hide that. You don't physically feel anything. It's just purely a little witness mark that just kind of discolors the surface of the material. Now, up until this point, we've talked about a little bit of key terms and the bend allowance, right? So we're gonna talk about that bend allowance that's happening in this stretched area here, and again, this is the compressed area on the inside from the previous lessons. That tension right here is, we talked about how it elongates, just like that rubber band, right? We're getting that stretching and stuff. We know that anything that's in this area right here is gonna be deformed. The last thing is, is that we have another little chunk of material, another chunk of area that is right here that goes from our tangent point to essentially that die line contact point. This area right here, and due to friction, right? So we have a contact, it's pulling across that surface. We do get a little bit of deformation, a little bit of stretch in this area right here. And so when you are putting in, you know, your jobs into whether it's us or you're doing it yourself at home, understanding that our deformation area lasts all the way across from die line point to die line point, it's gonna be critical to make sure that your parts come out correct. When you are putting in your parts on our website and you have a hole or a feature that falls within essentially those die lines, actually slightly over, you're going to end up getting a Lisa warning message. It's gonna show up yellow on your, uh, your part. And what we're telling you is that 
if you have a hole in this section right here, there's a chance, a likelihood that you're gonna see deformation. The closer you go to the center of that bend, the more guaranteed you're gonna see deformation. You can go ahead and accept that. We will make the part as is, but just understand that what you're accepting is, is the chance for that to occur in your parts. So that's it for lesson four. To get pricing on your parts, drag or drop your step file or DXF straight onto sendcutsend.com. While you're there, check out our merch. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.